Welcome to the Caltex Theatre, a full hour of dramatic entertainment broadcast over a nationwide network of stations throughout Australia. The Caltex Theatre is brought to you by Caltex Oil, marketers of over a thousand outstanding petroleum products in association with Caltex dealers and distributors everywhere. Tonight in the Caltex Theatre you will hear Four in Hand, an amusing story of two men and two women who learn through a series of mix-ups that love, friendship, romance and peace of mind are not easy horses to drive. Four in Hand. Starring tonight you will hear Aileen Britton. Your producer, E. Mason Wood. <laughs> The Caltex Theatre presents Four in Hand, Act One. Had a nice stroll, Clive? No. Too damn many birds singing. There's a blackbird out there who's positively insolent. Bored again. Not again. This is the same boredom I'd have ever since we came to her sister's house. Why can't we play bridge or something? Oh, later. Come and look at the family album. Wouldn't you like to see what I looked like when I was ten? I'd loathe it. Oh, look. That's a group from the fourth form at St. Mary's. Revolting. This one says, Janet aged seven on a swing. Oh, yes. Oh, that's father pushing me. He was so intent on smiling at the camera that he didn't notice the return of the swing and had knocked out his front teeth. Oh, that's me and Diana. You wouldn't think we were sisters, would you? Oh, I don't know. You both have your dear mother's expression of low cunning. Is Diana in the music room with the infant prodigy? If by infant prodigy you mean Gordon, she is. He's finished the first movement of his concerto and Diana wants to hear it. Damn quiet concerto. Couldn't be Caprizioso, could it? What's Diana up to, eh? Man hunting? Gordon was invited here so he could compose his music in peace and quiet. Confound it, Diana couldn't tell the difference between a bark fugue and the three blind mice. Now she's suddenly become an addict just because she's met this young composer. Well, that's her affair. She's doing her best to make it one. Oh, nothing of the sort. She's madly in love with him and wants to marry him. He's rather sweet. Naive is the word. I suppose he thinks vital statistics are something to do with the cost of living. However, Diana will soon enlighten him. Oh, Clyde! Damn it, she's twice his age. She's 30 and he's 23. And what about you and me? You're 42 and I'm only 28. Altogether different. I'm a terribly young 42 and you are an ageing 28. Clive! You think you are a terribly young 42. You look 62 when you take that dinky little belt off your tummy. Janet, you're on sacred ground. Well, you're being disagreeable about Diana. And I know why. It's just because she won't sell you that picture you've been pestering her for. She knows nothing about Lotrek, but she knows I'm keen. If I'd thought she was going to be so obstinate about it, I wouldn't have let you persuade me to come down here. Now you are here. Why not make the best of it? There isn't a best of it. I'm going back to town. There's simply nothing to do here. Oh, there must be something. But why don't you go and, and shoot some rabbits? Because I'm in no urgent need of rabbits. I've played billiards with myself. I've played patience with myself. I've done every crossword in the house. I've watched Diana's garden and mow the lawns. I've drunk beer in the local pub and met men who told me all about ticks. And I'm still itching. Diana or no Diana, we're going back to town. Oh, I can't let Diana down like that. We may get away quite soon. Oh? As soon as Diana gets her man. That's a crude way of saying it. Sorry. Ah, oh, you're quite right. You and I should do everything in our power to bring those two admirably suited persons together. Hello, darlings. Sorry to have left you so long. Oh, don't worry. I found something new and exciting to do. Sit in the churchyard and watch the ivy climb the clock tower. Far too energetic at your age. Oh, stop it, you two. We were looking at the old family album. Look at you at ten years old. Fantastic. Clive! Oh, 
Oh, here's me again in my first party dress. Oh, how well I remember it. What a memory. I say, these memories are horrible. What about St. Bridge, eh? When Gordon gets back. He's gone for a walk. He wanted a breather. Which way to go? By the river, I think. All right. I'll go and meet him. And don't either of you move till I get back. What's biting him? Oh, nothing. Clive's a bit sick of the country. Wants us to leave in the morning. And leave Gordon and me in the house together? Oh, no, you can't do that. Oh, of course not. But Clive is a prey to sudden ideas, you know. Behaves oddly now and then. How? Well, the latest idea is I should have a baby. Might be a good one, too. Might steady you two up. What do you mean? Oh, darling, you can't deny the fact that things between you two are a bit rocky. I mean, you do quite a bit of snapping at one another. Oh, nonsense. Clive and I are on the best of terms. But if I do go in for children, it'll be because Clive wants me to. Reason enough. <laughs> anyway, it's pretty comic hearing you talk. You're not a very good exponent of domesticity. I know, dear. Men don't expect domesticity from me. I wish they did. It's far less exhausting. Oh, there you are, ladies. Feeling better, darling? My word, yes. Where's Clive? Oh, don't tell me he missed you. He went by the river. Oh, I came the other way. Oh, be an angel and go and fetch him. Of course. Uh, by the river? Yes. And if he's thrown himself in, don't pull him out. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, no, no, of course not, that is. Isn't he adorable? It's almost incredible that anyone so young could write such wonderful music. Everyone says he's going to be really good in time. Diana, Gordon's not like other men you've known. You could hurt him horribly, not only him, but his music and his career. That's important, Diana. You see, if you make him fall in love with you and then dump him after a month or two... Why should I? Well, you know you do. Clive says you work with men to a timetable, like the railways, you know. All right, I admit it, but this is different. I adore him, Janet. He's the one man I've been waiting for all my life. This is the real thing at last. It's happened to me, really happened to me. I'm so relieved. What about Gordon? Does he feel the same? Well, it's hard to say. He's so absurdly shy. Has he said anything? Not yet, but he will. Oh, Janet, I can't tell you how thrilled I am. It's time I settle down. It'll be a wonderful life, the wife of a famous composer. They get a tremendous fuss made over them, you know. Oh, but Diana, it surely isn't just because of that. Oh, no. Truth is, Janet, I love him like blazes, and I'd continue to do so if he never wrote another note. Well, that's certainly a weight off my mind. Where is he? Oh, you haven't missed him again. <laughs> I don't think that's funny. Oh, sit down and calm yourself. I'll go and find him. And don't quarrel while I'm gone. You know something, Diana? This Low Trek painting is quite wrong in here. I like it where it is. You know, I could let you have a utrillo that would be perfect in this setting, if you let me have this one. I couldn't do that, Clive. It was my husband's favourite. I keep it in memory of him. Do you mind me being a little sentimental? No, I admire you for it. I might go another 500. It's not a question of money, Clive. If I could bring myself to part with it, I'd give it to you. I'm sure you would. Charming young fellow, young Gordon. Isn't he? He's got a sublime faith in woman and all she stands for. Yes, hasn't he? Isn't it horrible to think that someday someone is going to disillusion him? Someone who let fall a careless word and shatter all his beliefs. Someone like yourself? Now you listen to me, Clive. I do wish you'd sell me that picture. You Devil. Do think it over. In the meantime, I'll exert myself to sustain Gordon's belief in women generally and to increase his admiration for one woman in particular. Where the devil did you get to, Gordon? Well, I was looking for you. Well, we're all here now. I'll get the cards. How's the masterpiece coming along? Well, I'm on the slow movement now, but well, it's coming rather slowly. The good things never come easily. If it is good. Of course it's good, Gordon. You must have more confidence in yourself. Well, that's not so easy. When I think that only six months ago I was living quietly with my aunt in Tunbridge Wells and, and, and now all this. Uh, Diana must meet your aunt one day. Oh, yes, she'd like her. I don't know what I'd have done without her. She, she's not well off, of course, but she's spent hundreds of pounds on me and my music. I really owe everything to her, even being here and knowing you people, if it comes to that. He's right, you know. Uh, nobody says he isn't. One never knows what's in store for one. He's right, you know. Even now, I, I can't get used to seeing my name in the papers and hearing people talk about me. Oh, you'll get used to that. Diana has, haven't you, dear? I thought you wanted to play bridge. You know, I like this room. It must be very pleasant to live here. Diana doesn't know how lucky she is. Do you know, if I wasn't married to her sister, 
I'd be making up to Diana myself so I could live here. Now, if I were your age, Gordon, Get I... the chairs, Clive. I'll help. I was thinking, Diana, I suppose one of these days you'll be marrying again. What a lucky beggar he'll be. This house, plenty of money, a woman who's as sweet-natured as she's lovely. Oh, Clive, stop talking like an auctioneer. <laughs> That's most amusing. Well, my trouble is I never know when you people are serious or joking. Well, that's easy. When we're serious, we're joking. When we're joking, we're serious. Oh, but you really are different. Nonsense, Gordon. We're just like other people underneath. With that gown on, Diana, he can see that for himself. Are we going to play bridge? Oh, may as well, though Clive gets irritable. How do we play? I'll have Diana. She's a disgusting little cheat, so I may as well have her with me as against me. Well, I, I hope you'll make allowances. I've rather got that music on my mind. Be a good fellow and forget your music. You know, it sometimes happens in the middle of the night. Sometimes when I lay my head on the pillow, I... Wait a minute. I've got it. Uh, please excuse me. I, sh I shan't be long. Well... That's the shortest rubber I've ever played. A silly fathead. Oh, now, don't lose your temper. He'll be back in a minute. Will he? As far as I'm concerned, he can go to Blazers. Janet, I said we'd leave in the morning. Get packed. We're going now. I'm off. Oh, I suppose I'll have to go and quieten him. You'd better take a hammer. No. Oh, Janet, use your wits. Cry on the side of the bed and say he's humiliated you in front of me. No, I used that last week when he said he wouldn't come down here. No. I, I think I'll be calm and white-faced, sort of anxious inside, because I'm worried about his blood pressure. Say that he used to be so kind and considerate, but now he's, he's difficult to live with. And then I'll say he must be tiring of me, and I'll ask him frankly if it's another woman. <laughs> yes, I'll do just that. Diana? Diana, I got it. Just a small change was needed. Are they all gone? I suppose I shouldn't have chased off like that. Don't worry, darling. Come and sit down here beside me on the settee. You're most awfully kind. Oh, no, I've done nothing. Oh, you've been wonderful. Don't be standoffish, Gordon. Am I? Oh, Lord. If you lack confidence, you know, you'll miss all sorts of pleasant things. Things that are yours for the asking. Do you think so? Gordon, what is it you want more than anything to complete your happiness? Surely you know. It, it's obvious. Tell me just the same. To write really good music. <clears throat> but you can't just write music day and night. You, One must play as well as work. Oh, yes, of course. One must do other things. Such as? Uh, well, um... Go on, darling. Well, I used to be pretty hot at swimming and boxing. How nice. I I've got some trophies, uh, cups and things at home. I'd, I'd like to show you them sometime. I'd love that. Oh, good. Swimming is one of the finest of exercises, you know. Yes, dear. Gordon, would you get me a drink and have one yourself? A good, strong one? Of course I'll have a nip with you. But you know I'm not very used to all this drinking. Oh, aren't you? A little more, don't you think? Don't be afraid of it. That's better. Oh, Gordon, I shall hate you leaving here. I get terribly lonely sometimes. You? Lonely? Yes, at times it's unbearable. I wonder if I could put that right for you. Oh, Gordon, if only you would. You wouldn't think it was a cheek. Oh, darling, of course I wouldn't. Well, if you'll let me, I'll buy you a dog. Oh. I'll get you a dog tomorrow. Oh, Gordon, don't stand by the drink wagon all night. Come and sit down again. I, I think I'll get a spaniel. Well, don't sit there, dear. Come, come and sit here by me on the settee. Of course. Thank you. You're not shy with me, are you? Well, a little, perhaps. Why? Well, I suppose because you're so beautiful and, and, and everything. Give me that glass. You don't want it. I'll put it on the table. There. So you think I'm beautiful? Oh, yes. I, I think you're one of the most beautiful women I've ever met. Go on. Of course, I haven't met many. Ah. Oh. Well, where are the others? I, I hope I haven't offended them. No, no, of course not. Uh, what were we talking about? Oh, I know. Gordon. I want you to feel quite at home here. You know, I I sort of feel you feel shy. I, I think, in fact, you rather put me on a pedestal. You shouldn't. I'm really quite an ordinary woman. In fact, quite a weak and helpless woman. Oh, no. Believe me, darling, I am. Oh, no. Yes, Gordon, quite definitely. Oh, no. But I am. No. Well, we won't argue about it. 
What are your plans when you leave here? Well, I'll go back to my aunt's, of course. Oh, no. I, I mean, why? Well, 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 it's my home. You could make this your home. Oh, I couldn't impose on you, and that's what it would be. And then my aunt would miss me. Well, I'm going to miss you, too, and I'm hoping you will miss me. Oh, I shall. Oh, so you do like me a little, then? Of course. We do suit one another, don't we? I felt it right at the start when we first met. Oh, darling, my heart seems strangely uplifted. It, it was like emerging from a dank and dark wood and finding yourself in a beautiful sunlit clearing. Good gracious, was it? Yeah, that's not all. Isn't it? When I heard your voice, although we were meeting for the first time, I had a feeling that I'd always known we were going to... to... Do you understand? Uh, vaguely. But I could see you felt the same. There was a look in your eyes. Let me see. Oh, yes, darling, it's there now. A kind of glowing warmth. Now tell me, what do you see in my eyes? All sorts of things. Tell me. No. Clive's packing. Oh, blast. I can't do a single thing with him leaving. Oh, nonsense, Janet. Is, is something the matter? Oh, Di, will you go and see what you can do? Well, I suppose I must. Now, now Gordon, don't run away. Is Clive really leaving? Yes. He said the moment our bags were packed, we wouldn't see him for dust. Uh, that doesn't mean you must leave, too. I... Well, I, I couldn't bear it. I, oh, oh, darling. Oh, God. Darling, God. Have you gone mad? Well, kissing me like that. Oh, I love you with all my heart, Janet. I've worshipped you from the moment I set eyes on you. Do you mind? Well, when a man grabs a woman like you did me and arms pinned to my side, no hope to struggle even, I... Well, I... I'll not commit myself at this stage. Oh, Janet, you're so beautiful, so, so wonderful. Why, the very instant I met you, a, a new world opened before my eyes. Um, it was like coming out of a horribly dark wood uh, into a b beautiful sunlit clearing. Oh, my poor boy. When you spoke, although we were meeting for the first time, I had a feeling I'd always know we were going to. Going to what? We're going to meet. Oh, for a moment you had me worried. Oh, Janet, I love you with every breath of my body. Oh, honestly, Gordon, this is too fantastic. Fantastic that I should dare to love you. Oh, no, I didn't mean it that way. I appreciate the honour you've done me, but there's one little drawback. I have a husband. Oh, he'll get over it. Get over what? Well, you're leaving him. You could, you know. Oh, certainly. I, I can't think what's stopping me. Well, he's not the man for you. And I suppose you are. Yes. Oh, and I thought you were too modest. Oh, give me a drink, for heaven's sake. Well, must I? You do drink rather a lot, don't you? Well, that's wonderful. In one breath you suggest I pay the unfaithful wife and then accuse me of drinking too much. Oh, poor Diana, I begin to think she has the wrong ideas about you. Well, must we talk about her? Well, it would be better for all concerned if you could manage to fall in love with her. I think you're heartless. I'm sorry, my dear, but I, I hadn't the least notion you felt this way about me. Oh, I adore you. There's a great future for me, I'm told, and with you to work for, why, I could do anything. Anything. I could make money, too, and it'd all be for you. It's no good, Gordon. I can't go on without you. I couldn't write a bar of music that wasn't ugly and uninspired. Think it over. Oh, my dear Gordon, you can't make a woman love you by arguing. If I did love you, I wouldn't want a debate. I'd want you to sweep me off my feet, pick me up and carry me off bodily like some captive maiden of old. If that's how you feel... Oh, oh no, not so fast. I'm speaking purely in the abstract. You're turning me down. For your own good and mine. Do you realise you're trying to steal another man's wife? You must have a very low view of my morals. Well, I didn't think of it that way. Mind you, no woman is ever really insulted by such a proposal, uh, so long as it isn't too rough. I'm bound to say you've insulted me in a most attractive way. But there's no hope for me. I'm afraid not. Then I'd like to leave. Well, you can't leave till morning. Very well, but after tomorrow I'd rather not see you again. Very well. J Janet, this is probably the last time I shall see you. May I kiss you? And have Clive and Diana walk in right in the middle of it? Oh, really, Gordon, you are a silly baby. Well, um, just one. Oh, Gordon, please. Oh, your arms are squeezing me terribly hard. Oh, oh Gordon. You do care. You do. Oh, Janet, you will come away with oh, me. Oh, keep away. Keep away from me. Keep away? A after that? It was a mistake. I didn't realise what I was doing. You can't put me off. We'll go together this very night. No! If you wanted me to be open about it, I'll tell Clive everything. No, no, for heaven's sake, no! Oh, I never dreamt this could happen. Oh, nor I. Oh, please go away. Oh, for pity's sake, go! Oh, listen. 
Clive's coming. Uh, uh, well, uh, hello. I'll, I'll, I'll just put this she sheet of music and put it on the piano again. Uh, sorry I messed up the bridge game. Uh, not at all. What's the matter with him? Had another arpeggio spasm. Another idea. Uh, sort of. And by the way, I've unpacked again. I'm sorry if I upset you. Am I forgiven? Oh, I suppose so. Oh, don't be difficult, darling. I've said I'm sorry and will stay as long as you like. The fact is, I'm content to be anywhere as long as you're around. That was rather a nice little speech, Clive. It suits you better than being flippant all the time. Well, flippancy's as good a mask as any. You make me feel uncomfortable. You seem suddenly tired, disappointed. Oh dear, oh dear, this won't do. I'd better make, an, make another pretty speech, only I think I've used up my repertoire. I'll make do with the one I've just had. Hello. Kissing, eh? Why not? Oh, Diana, Clive's agreed to stay. I know. The rat made me promise him the picture. I might have known. Of course you wouldn't believe me if I said the Lautrec had nothing to do with it. No. Can't blame you. Appearances are against me. What on earth's the matter now? Nothing your sudden demise wouldn't cure. Oh. Where's Gordon? Music room. You know, Janet, I'm beginning to think there might be drawbacks to being married to a composer who drops everything when inspiration comes. It might be embarrassing. And I could have killed you when you came down. He was on the brink of proposing. No. The words were trembling on his lips and he got that goggly look in his eyes that nice men get when they have to mention the word love. Oh, Janet, I'm so thrilled. But did you ever know anybody so preposterously shy? You know, I don't believe he's ever kissed a girl in his life. You don't say. <laughs> Janet. Just gone out. I want to borrow a bathing cap. Mine's in ribbons. Going bathing with Gordon? Yes, that's why I've got my bathing costume on. Ah. Ah, what? I once read that the essence of good salesmanship is clever display of the goods. That should certainly hook him. Mind your own business. Well, where's your gratitude? I've done all I can. I sing your praises ad lib. I'd never have believed I could lie so convincingly. What holds him back? Clive, there's something you can tell me. Yes, dear. You can see me as Gordon sees me. Well, thanks, if you think Gordon won't mind. Oh, don't be so damned infuriating. You know perfectly well what I mean. Listen, I am now 28. 30. And you'll be 31 on the 25th of this month. Will you listen? I want you to tell me honestly, as a man looking at a woman, as Gordon would see me. Do I look 28 or um, 30? And to be quite honest, you don't. Oh, what a weight you've lifted off my mind. And if you had mentioned matronly, I'd have killed myself. Pity you didn't tell me. I swear he loves me, Clive. Look at the way he moons about the house. Yes, he's a case if ever I saw one. Then what holds him back? I've given him every encouragement. You've done everything except hit him over the head. Maybe that's the trouble. A man likes to think he goes after a wife of his own free will. Of course he doesn't. You've been after Gordon with a wedding ring in one hand and a shotgun in the other. Try being more demure, more dove-like. More what? Dove-like. At least like a hawk pouncing on a sparrow. Oh, Clive, you You see, must... this youngster is different. He's got something you and I are not used to. What's that? Niceness. Niceness? You see, you never even heard of it. Your experience has been confined to men like Jeff Carstairs and me. We all, our kind that is, know what's cooking when you flutter those long lashes. Gordon would merely think you've got something in your eye. As a preacher, Clive, you're just comical. Scoff away, but I'm right. This kid's refreshing. Mm, he is rather sweet. And I'm not very happy at the prospect of letting you gobble him up. Then why help me? The sooner you get Gordon, the sooner I get the low trek, and the sooner I can leave this hole in rural England and return to London. My dear Clive, I've changed. Oh, I know I've always gone my own way, but now I'll settle down in real earnest. That's quite an achievement if Gordon has brought it about. You were a bit over the odds, you know. Well, what about you? I've never heard you talking about niceness before. Even I can pity a rabbit in a trap. Oh, Clive. I'm sorry, but I like the young beggar. You'll soon be weeping all over me and wishing you'd been a little like Gordon at his age instead of the horrible little squirt you undoubtedly were. Thank you. However, much and all as you have vilified, not to say insulted me, I have given your dilemma some thought. Did I happen to hear that Gordon had won cups for swimming? And so what? 
You're going swimming with him, and there are some very nasty currents in that river. Why not... I know. I try to drown, and he saves me. Oh, Clive, how corny can you get? It's worked before. After all, you have said you'd like to feel his arms around you. But not in the middle of the river. Please don't belittle my idea. Look, you're just giving up, crying out pitifully. He grasps you and with strong, sweeping strokes brings you to the bank. You raise your slender white arms to him and say, with love and gratitude in your eyes, Gordon, how can I ever repay you? With all that gratitude and love in my eyes, I'm asking for trouble. Then you say, I'm so cold, Gordon, hold me in your arms. The poor devil does it. Clive, it sounds too easy. Sorry to have kept you waiting, Diana. Shall we go now? Yes. I'll just nip upstairs and borrow another cap from Janet. I won't be a moment, darling. How are things, Gordon? You look depressed. Oh, no, no, not a bit. Where's Janet? Out in the garden. Want her? Oh, no, no. I, I was only wondering if she was coming to have a dip with us. I think not. How's the music? Not in the mood. Something on your mind? What on earth should there be? Oh, uh, a woman? You are in love, aren't you? Good heavens, she hasn't told you, has she? No need. I've got eyes in my head. Thing is, take her, my boy, take her. What? You, you wouldn't mind? Oh, I should I? Well, some men would. Nonsense. I'd rather it was you than someone else. Go ahead and good luck to you. Well, I, I, I hardly know how to thank you. Like me to say something when she comes back? You know, something apt? Uh, no, no thanks. Well, mind you do the thing properly. Of course. I'll, I'll sweep her off her feet. I might even pick her up and carry her off in my arms like some captive maid of old. What? Uh, well, someone told me women like that sort of thing. Oh. Well, take the plunge boldly, Gordon. The plunge. <laughs> A telegram for Diana. Oh, just too late. She's gone to nearly drown herself. I get the idea, and I'll bet it's one of your masterpieces. I wish to heaven Diana would leave the poor boy alone. I'm sure he doesn't want a bar of her. Then who does he want a bar of? Oh, never mind, don't answer that. Clive, I'm going to tell Diana we must leave here tomorrow. After all I've suffered, I am not leaving here till that picture is mine. What's wrong, Gordon? Oh, bring her in here, Gordon. Oh, you idiot, Clive. Your plot's gone wrong. Good heavens, you don't mean... Lay her down here, Gordon. What's happened, for Pete's sake? She got sucked under. Is she... Brandy, quick, Clive, and don't just stand there looking like an idiot. And so the curtain falls on Act One of tonight's Caltex play, Four in Hand. Faster starts, smoother acceleration, more economical running. That's what you get from Caltex Butane Boosted Gasoline, the gasoline designed to take better care of your car's performance. Next time you fill up, change to Caltex Butane Boosted Gasoline. Your car will respond more readily, tick over more smoothly and steadily. Caltex Butane Boosted Gasolines at the sign of the Caltex Star, where we take better care of your car. You'll be happier by far when you stop at the Caltex Star because of all the things we do. And we take pride in serving you. The Caltex Theatre now presents Aileen Britton in Four in Hand, Act Two. Well, Gordon, what happened? I'm afraid I hit her. Would you mind repeating that? I hit her on the jaw, knocked her out. She was drowning and wound herself around me. So you socked her on the jaw? Yes, it's the correct thing to do. Most decidedly. Uh, Janet, is she coming round? Oh, I think oh. so. It's all right, darling. You're quite safe. Uh, Gordon, if Diana asks for me, you might tell her I've been called to the Arthur Hebrides and All Points West. Oh. I may not be back for several months. Oh. Janet, oh. What's happened? Gordon saved you from drowning, dear. No need to worry. Ouch. I've got the most terrible neuralgia. Now, keep oh. calm, darling. Oh, Janet, I remembered how I was drowning. Really drowning. Oh, it was awful. 
awful. I could see my whole past. Well, that would be awful. Oh, if you only knew what I went through. I'll never go swimming again. It's funny drowning should give you such a pain in the jaw. I'm most terribly sorry, Diana. You. You do feel all right now, though, don't you? Do I? Well, you, you were pulling me down. Hitting you was the only thing to do. They teach you that in life-saving. How very thoughtful of them. Well, I can't understand your going out so far. I didn't know I was going to be polexed. I'll be more careful in future. Now, let's get you upstairs and we can get this wet swimsuit oh, off. I, I don't think I can move. I, I feel funny inside. That's probably the water you've swallowed. Water? I thought it was brandy. He means the river water. River water? Oh, but Janet, that's seething with horrible wriggly things. The small boys put them in jars. Oh, Lord, I can feel them inside swimming about. Millions of them. Well, have some more brandy. They don't oh. like it. Oh, thanks, I will. <coughs> oh, as long as it doesn't start them on a drunken orgy. <coughs> oh, blast. Now, I've got hiccups. Well, I can easily cure that for you. Now, all you have to do... No, thanks. Especially if it's in the life-saving code. I'd rather have hiccups. I like it, cuts. Oh, you'll feel better <laughs> after a rest. I shan't feel better till I've seen Clive. Well, he left a few minutes ago. I, I can't think why. He had his reasons. Well, I'll find him if you like. No. No, wait till I've got my strength back. I'll take that rest, and I don't advise anyone to come near me for 24 hours. Oh, it'll wear <laughs> off, dear. How do you know? Have you ever been socked on the jaw by a man who's won cups for it? Tell me when Clive arrives and leave one of my golf clubs by my bed. Did you really have to hit her? Well, of course. I don't go around knocking out women for the fun of it. J Janet, I, I must talk to you. Uh, hadn't you better go and change? Are you quite heartless? This is the first time I've been alone with you since... Since I made a fool of myself in a moment of madness. Now keep away from me, Gordon. Look, I see I've got to be brutally frank with you. That little lapse of the other day doesn't mean I'm in love with you. Gordon, please remember, I have got a husband. But you're not in love with him. Well, that's quite beside the point. You men, incidentally, would lead very lonely lives if women only married you for love. Well, I must be an exception. I just love you with every scrap of feeling I've got. Oh, if you'd only come away with me. For the weekend or till death do us part? Well, um, well, till after the divorce, you could live with my aunt in Tunbridge Wells. Sh she's very broad-minded. She'd need to be. Oh, but she is. Oh, Janet, please. Please do as I ask. Come away with me. You, you can't go on living with a man you don't love. I'm very fond of Clive. Fond? Oh, what's that? Oh, Gordon, once and for all, I don't love you. Your lips didn't say that when I held you in my arms. Oh, I've, I've explained that. It, it was nothing. A moment of weakness. Oh, no fear, it wasn't. You're not deceiving me. You love me right enough, but you're too cowardly to go through with oh, it. Gordon, you've no right to say a thing like that. Well, don't you like the truth? Well, I've gone out of my way to be honest with you, and all I get is insults. I didn't ask you to fall in love with me. You'd better run away somewhere and cool down. I'll tell you where I'm going. Janet! Oh, oh, Diana, why aren't you resting? It's no good, I can't. Every time I close my eyes, I go through that horrible business of drowning again. Have you any aspirin? Yes, I'll get some for you. By the way, this telegram just arrived for you. Thanks. Diana, will you marry me? Certainly, help yourself. <laughs> what did you say? I asked you to marry me. Why, oh, you've asked me. You've asked me? Of course I will. Here's the aspirin, Diana. Janet, Gordon's asked me to marry him. Congratulations to both. I take it you won't be needing the aspirins. Oh, don't be absurd. Oh, I'm so happy. We must ring up the papers at once. Oh, excuse me, I'm going Where to... are you going, Gordon? Well, nowhere in particular. I'll be back in a minute. Oh, for Pete's sake, you can't run off like that. Janet, can you beat that? First he socks me, then proposes, and then he runs away. Quite unique. Most men propose first and sock afterwards. Oh, shut up, Janet. Gordon, for heaven's sake, let yourself go. Say something or do something. Uh, such as? Well, do that trick with a cigarette where you make smoke come out of your ears. Don't be an idiot, Janet. Well, Gordon, at least you can kiss me. Of course. Oh, darling, what passion. My dear, there's so much I'll have to teach you. Oh, well, if the lessons are going to start now, <coughs> I'll just... Oh, Clive, come in. Don't just peep around the corner. It's all right, I've forgiven you. I forgive everybody for everything they've ever done to me, and that's plenty. You haven't lost your memory or anything? No. Come in and hear the wonderful news. Gordon's proposed. Congratulations, Beth. This calls for a drink. Tell me all about it. Well, I came in here... Go on. Oh, Lord, isn't life a scream? 
I came in here for an aspirin and got a husband. You hear that, Janet? She came in for an aspirin and got a husband. <laughs> <laughs> Do you always have to behave like a clown, Clive? I do, Jane. If my proposal was so funny, I can always withdraw it. What? Clive, why didn't you keep your silly mouth shut? I like that. It was you who mentioned the aspirin. Forgive us, Gordon. If I've said anything out of place, I apologise. So I should think. Fine. I'll get the drinks now. Gordon, don't try to be funny anymore. I still think it was funny. Ha, ha. Janet. Uh, shut up, Janet. And don't you talk to me like that, Clive. To our young lovers, and may they always be as happy as they are at this moment. <laughs> written quickly and then make a bolt. Gordon. Janet. Uh, good Lord, it's, it's four o'clock in the morning. Why did you come down? I guessed you were doing a moonlight flit. I wouldn't like you to leave with unkind feelings about me. I'm sorry you came down. A fine mess you're in. You must have been mad to throw yourself at Diana just to spite me. Well, I, I acted on impulse. It, it wasn't spite. Oh, now this note's no good. I'll have to start another. To Diana, I suppose. Will you please go away and let me finish it? Very well. Difficult letter, I suppose. It takes some explaining why you knock a woman senseless and then propose and then desert her all in one day. Please don't peep over my shoulder. When it's finished, I'll submit it for your approval. What do you think she'll say when she reads it? I don't care. I shan't be here. But I shall. And I can see the house collapsing on me. But it'll do you good. All of you need shaking up. Look at Diana. She throws herself at every man who comes along. Oh, really? And Clive always seeking some opening to exercise his puny wit. Oh, no, that's not fair. You don't understand, Clive. Well, there's nothing to understand. To him, everything's a joke. Why, if I were to go upstairs and tell him you and I were running away together, he'd say, My dear Gordon, run away with her if you want to, but for heaven's sake, don't wake me up in the middle of the night to tell me about it. Go on. And you are the worst. At least they're genuine, but you're not. You have the hands of a musician, but now you only use them for pouring drinks. Oh, that's cruel. I think I'll go back to bed. Well, in that case, I'll finish my note. Good night. Goodbye. Oh, I'm sorry you're unhappy. It isn't my fault I don't love you, and, and you've no right to turn on me and make me feel so, so useless. Oh, I'm sorry, Janet. I'm afraid that was just spite and disappointment. Can you forgive me? Of course. Well, then, goodbye. Goodbye, Gordon. Oh, darling, you must come with me. I, I can't go on if you don't. You're everything to me. Oh, I didn't think you needed me like this. Oh, Janet... You'll come? Yes, I'll come. Then I'll slip away this very minute. Without telling them. I'll write a note while you're dressing. I'll only be a minute. Oh, shut up. Hello. What? Yes, this is 780. Your daughter's ill. Look, look, who do you want? No, I'm not Dr. Gregory. Yes, this is 780, but I'm not Dr. Gregory. You must have got your numbers mixed. Well, I don't care what you phoned last time. And the same to you, you old buzzard. Anyone down there? Suitcase. Oh, behind the curtain, I think. Uh, yes. Yes, that's right. Uh, Tunbridge Wells. Y you'll ring me back? Uh, thanks. Darling, what on earth are you doing? Oh, well, Diana. I'm there, and I tried so hard not to disturb you. Um, the fact is, I'm putting a call through to my aunt. At 4.30 in the morning? Yes. You're not ill, are you? Oh, no, 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 no. It's nothing like that. It's... Uh, well, I, I, I got it into my head that something had happened to my aunt, and I simply had to find out. And has anything happened to your aunt? Well, I, I'm waiting to get through now. You, you must think I'm an awful fool. Oh, not at all, dear. One can have premonitions. Give me a cigarette. Hmm? Oh, what's the matter? Well, you'd hardly have time to finish it. I mean, you don't want to lose any sleep now. Oh, don't be silly. My word, you are in a state. It's a good thing you'll have me to look after you from now on. Oh, Diana, I do wish... Gordon! You're fully dressed. Well, I... Yes, I know. Just to speak to your aunt on the telephone? Yes, exactly. Well, I, I always dress for that. My aunt's very old-fashioned. Oh, really, dear, this is rather alarming. You'll have to see a doctor about your nerves. Ah, oh, that'll be your aunt. Oh, it can't be. Uh, I mean, it's rather quick. Now, hold on, Gordon. I'll take that call. I've an idea there's something odd going on here. But, Diana... Hello. Yes, that's my number. Who am I? Well, who are you? Oh, Mr. Crewe, how very mysterious you're being. I'm sorry, darling. Do forgive me. No, I was speaking to Gordon, my fiancé. Yes, fiancé. It only happened today, or should I say yesterday now? Your wife was called what? 
No. From this number? Darling, have you been calling anyone an old buzzard? Me? No, of course you haven't. No, Mr. Grew, there must be some mistake. No, not from here. Oh, not at all. We were up anyway. Bye. Where's the fire? Only the telephone, dear. It was all a mistake. That's wonderful. How can I sleep when bells are ringing all over the house? Oh, it wasn't you, was it? It wasn't me what? Calling the vicar's wife an old buzzard. What the devil are you talking about? Evidently it wasn't you. What's going on here? Why are you dressed so early, Gordon? Oh, yes, dear. You were going to tell me when the telephone rang. Yes, I was just going to tell you when the telephone rang. Gordon, why all this mystery? Well, the, the fact is, I, I, I do this in my sleep. I've done it ever since I was a child. It's a terrible affliction. What is? Sleepwalking. Sleepwalking? Oh, darling, you poor lamb. Why didn't you tell me? I, I quite often wake up and find I've dressed myself like this right down to the very last detail. Amazing. I'm most interested. Uh, tell me the history of your case. At this hour? Uh, don't worry about that, old boy. I shan't go back to bed now. You won't? It isn't worth it now. But I should hate to feel I'd spoiled your night's rest. I couldn't think of sleeping after this. About this sleepwalking. Uh, but, Diana... I think I'll just wait to find out how your aunt is. How his aunt is? Uh, Gordon's waiting for a trunk call. You are having a busy night. You had a premonition, didn't you, Gordon? As well as sleepwalking. I suppose it does sound a bit extraordinary. He probably wants a tonic to pull him together. There'd have to be some tonic. What sort of premonition was it? He thought something awful had happened to his aunt. Well, I, I can't help it. I'm just made that way. I mean, these moods completely get hold of me, and until I can find out, I'm all to pieces. Well, I'll see if I can get them to hurry the call. Uh, no, 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 no. Please, please don't bother. Why on earth not? I don't think I've been up as early as this since I spent a somewhat peculiar holiday in the Channel Islands. Gordon, what does this mean? This note, on the desk here. What is it? Let me see. I, I, I'm most frightfully sorry. But what does it mean? What have I done? He tells you here. It's all been a horrible mistake. Gordon, is this some joke? You can't be serious. I'm sorry, Diana, but I'm afraid I am. But why suddenly treat me like this? I, I told you, I, I made a mistake. You made a mistake? Well, that's pretty cool. You made a mistake, Clive. I, I don't expect you to forgive me, but on my honour, no one regrets it more than I do. He means it hurts him more than it hurts you. What kind of a woman do you think I am? Perhaps that's the trouble. You keep out of this. Gordon, you needn't think you can play this sort of game with me because you can't. Now, what's the meaning of it? Is there another woman? Uh, another woman? Oh, good, good Lord, no. Because if there is, oh, of I'll course bring... there isn't another woman. How could there be? Whom are you thinking of? Well, how should I know? Even Tunbridge Wells can't be populated entirely by aunts. We'll soon know when this telephone call comes through. Well, I, I didn't really make a call. I'm afraid that was what you might call a subterfuge. It seems to me you've learned pretty fast while you've been here. Oh, never mind all that. Gordon, why have you suddenly decided you can't marry me? There must be some reason. Yes, this afternoon. Or rather, yesterday, you told me quite definitely you were in love with Diana. Did I? You know very well you did. Oh, uh, well, that was yesterday, don't you see? No, I don't see. What's made you change your mind? Nothing. I, I, I haven't changed my mind. Then you're still in love with me? Oh, no, no. But you must be if you haven't changed your mind. You mean you had no intention of marrying me? No. Uh, yes. No, I mean no. Uh, Make up your mind. Well, I, I intended to marry her at the time. Oh, I'm getting so confused. Well, what do you think I'm getting? Oh, now, just a minute. What is this mistake you keep talking about? He still hasn't told me why he won't marry me. I'm beginning to think he has. Then, Clive, for heaven's sake, tell me. It's possible I've been on the wrong track all the time. Do you think I have, Gordon? I, I couldn't say. Will somebody tell me what's going now, on? Hold on a minute. I seem to remember your behaving rather oddly when I said I could see you were mad about Diana. Not only that, you seemed astonished when I said Diana was gone on you. Though God knows you need to be deaf, dumb and blind not to see it the way she's been throwing herself at your head. Clive, of all the cheap. Well, haven't you? The only thing you haven't done is to wear a paper hat with Kiss Me Gordon on it. Oh. He must have known. So why was he making out he didn't? It must have been because he didn't want to propose to you at all. Am I getting warm? Oh, very well, then. I didn't want to hurt Diana's feelings, but I see I must. The truth is, I was going to marry you, but I couldn't go through with it because it was such a dirty business. A dirty business? Marrying me a dirty business? No, 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 no. I, I meant it would only be for your money that I was marrying you, and it seemed such a dirty trick. I, I couldn't go on. You have the impertinence to stand there and tell me to my face you'd only marry me for my money? No, dear. He's saying he couldn't marry you even with your money. But it's downright insulting. He could have phrased it more delicately. 
Who do you think you are to stand there and... and to, to, but it's unbelievable. It's what novelists call being brutally honest. Honest? You call what he's done to me being honest? I, I'm deeply sorry. I'm not as sorry as you're going to be, my boy. <gasps> my heavens, the newspapers. The engagement will be in all the papers this morning. I've always said you can't believe all you read in the newspapers. Well, if you like, you can say that you jilted me. Don't worry, old boy, she will. Believe me, there'll be some pretty lurid stories circulating about you before you're much older. I shouldn't be surprised. As, as a matter of fact... Still, you'll have the satisfaction of knowing that for once in this very imperfect world, it's paid to act up to one's principles. How do you know? You never had any. Well, there's something else I may as well tell you. In fact, I want to. You needn't bother, I know. You know? I tumbled to it suddenly just now when I was recalling that conversation we had yesterday about Diana. Oh, what is all this? Do you want to drive me mad? You'll soon get over it. If somebody doesn't tell me... I'll what... tell you. I'm in love with Janet. Your what? Now you can understand why he wouldn't take your bait. Well, of all the nerve. I can't believe it. Oh, he's not the first youngster to conceive a hopeless passion for Janet. Uh, don't let it worry you, Gordon. One soon gets over these things at your age. Clive, are you telling me Janet's responsible for all this? Uh, do show some sense, Diana. But Gordon said... I know he did. Of course he's fallen for Janet, but you don't suppose Gordon's the sort to make love to a married woman? He'd be horrified if he thought she knew. Matter of fact, Gordon, I, I feel a bit of a swine for dragging it out of you. I hope you'll forgive me. It'll be our secret. We won't embarrass you by telling Janet. Oh, won't we? I've a thing or two to say to Janet. Let her sleep on. If you bring her down here, it'll only be embarrassing for her and Gordon. Are you referring to me? Janet, you. What the devil does this mean, Janet? What do you think it means? I don't know how you dare stand there and face me, you scheming little traitor. Janet, what are you doing here in those clothes and with your suitcase? Oh, of course, she walks in her sleep as well. Well, listen, Diana. If you must blame someone, blame me. Why, you, you philandering piano player. She's welcome to you. I wouldn't marry you now if I had to choose between you and... and... A performing seal is the customary phrase. I don't want any help from you, Clive. A nice fool you've been made to look. If you were anything of a man, you'd... You'd knock him down. Why? Well, he'd only get up again. Oh, I always knew you had no pluck. Well, I hope you're satisfied. But as far as I'm concerned, I've done with a lot of you. I'll thank you all to leave my house. I'll give you half an hour. And if you're all not gone by then, I'll have you thrown out. Oh. One can, of course, see her point of view. Well? I, I can imagine what you're thinking. But I couldn't help myself. No. It seems to me you've helped yourself pretty liberally. We did fight against it. Oh, quite. Whose side were you on? Oh, Clive, I know how you feel and I'm bitterly ashamed. But there's simply nothing I can do about it. How long has this been going on, Janet? It hasn't started yet, if that's what you mean. Is that the truth? Of course it's the truth. I hope you're not suggesting I've been unfaithful to you. I couldn't prevent the thought passing through my mind. Forgive me, Janet. Oh, never mind. You'll divorce me, of course. Your happiness is all that counts. Oh, Clive. One can't fight against love. One can fight against everything else, but against love one is powerless. Oh, that's most awfully true. I don't know if it's true, but it sounds magnificent. Give no thought to me, Janet. I shall probably go to Greenland and devote the rest of my life to collecting wild plants for the British Museum. Look here, Clive. You're being too jolly noble for words. No. I'm maintaining my composure by a considerable effort of will. Please go now while I have myself in hand. Take her from my sight, Gordon, before I break down and humiliate myself. Well, all right, if, if that's how you feel. And I'd like to say I think you've been very decent about the whole thing. Thank you, Gordon. I wish I could say the same to you. It's all very fishy. I believe you're glad I'm going. My dear. I think your whole attitude is extremely odd. I could burst into tears if you particularly wish. It. Oh, do stop trying to be amusing. I don't understand you. It's not as if I haven't been a good wife to you. My dear, I can thoroughly recommend you. As a cook, Gordon, Janet is a real wizard, so long as you can find your diet to a boiled egg. As for running a house, I don't know anyone to touch her, so long as there's a staff of a dozen servants to do the odds and ends. Oh, that's not fair. There's been no need for me to do those things. Well, now's your chance. You can do them for Gordon. Oh, yes, rather. It'll be great fun, won't it, Janet? Oh, yes, of course. Well, you want to break into it gradually, though. Don't make her scrub floors right at the start. Oh, good Lord, no. We'll do what my aunt does. Have a woman in one morning a week. One morning? Oh, you're going to his aunt. Yes. Well, she'll have Janet to help her now. You'll love that, won't you, Janet? Perhaps you could teach in the Sunday school. You were always so fond of children. I always think that's what's wrong with a modern marriage, not enough children. Uh, don't you agree? Oh, yes, I do. My aunt's always saying the very same thing. She says everyone ought to have at least six children. How many? Uh, that's only what his aunt says. 
You'd better take her away. Clive, I want to know, are you glad to get rid of me or no? How can you ask such a question? There's another woman, isn't there? My dear. There is. You've got someone ready to take my place even before my back is turned. Yeah, I say, Jen, I'd ought you to talk to him like that when he's been so decent. Oh, be quiet. Clive, I demand an answer. Very well. There's no other woman. I don't believe you. My dear Janet, just reflect. Is it likely that I'd encumber myself with another woman after successfully relieving myself of you? Oh, to say a thing like that after I've given you the best years of my life. If you've done that, it's a poor outlook for God. Oh, very funny, very funny indeed. You think you're so smart. I'll never forgive you for this. Janet, don't you think we ought to be going? Oh, in a minute. Do you think I'm going to let him treat me like this without even telling him what I think of him? You'll find out soon enough how you'll miss me when I'm gone. Janet, why are you carrying on like this? What does it all matter now? We're going. Oh, by the way, Gordon, it's none of my business now, but naturally, after the years Janet and I have been together, I can't easily forget her welfare. I take it you can support her, well, uh, in moderate comfort? I netted 500 pounds last year. Excellent. This year I hope to double it. Do you hear that, Janet? He hopes to double it. Oh, of course, I can't promise I will. He can't promise you will. Oh, you don't have to repeat everything he says. I'm not deaf. Then it only remains for me to wish you both happiness, small though your chances may be. Gordon, be kind to her. And above all, resist the temptation to fetch her one across the face and tell her to stop her blasted oh, snivelling. Clive! You could always play her some soothing music. Oh, stop it, Clive. I could kill you. It's good advice I'm giving. I know. That's why I could kill you. I'll do let's go, Janet. We've discussed all this quite long enough. But why the hurry? No, oh, Clive's right, Gordon. It'll be absurd to leave at this grisly hour. At least we can wait until after breakfast. Oh, do. Breakfast is such a jolly meal. <laughs> Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, I'm sorry, Gordon. It was all a dream. A dream? Just now, alone with you in this room, Clive has brought me back to reality. But, uh, Janet, you can't possibly mean... Gordon, it's no good. But I don't understand. You can't stay here with him. You don't love him. I'm not even sure that that's true now. Thank you, Janet. <laughs> you mean you'd let her stay after what's happened? Of course. But just now you practically said you'd be glad to get rid of her. I can understand your perplexity. You must go, Gordon. I'm terribly sorry if I've hurt you, but it would never have worked. I don't know what happened to me. Is that your last word? Yes. So once more I've made a fool of myself. You'll get over it. One has to learn about women one way or another. You've had the full course all in one week. I can tell you one thing. No woman's going to get the chance to do this to me again. Quite right, my boy. If I were you, Gordon, I should now make a graceful exit. I bear you no ill will. In fact, I'm grateful to you for bringing Janet and me to a closer understanding. Well, I'm glad I've been of some use. You must call on me the next time you need my help. You know, I don't believe he said goodbye. However, there may be another chance. He doesn't know it, but there isn't a train for two and a half hours. I don't know how I can look you in the face. Well, you know, I'm a dull-witted sort of fellow. But I do know when the time has come for a husband to do his best to be understanding and helpful. Oh, so you're still here? We are. You don't mean... Congratulations. I'm sorry, Diana. I must have been slightly mad. I should think we all were. When I think of what that boy did to me, I wonder I have any self-respect left. Thank heaven for Jeff. Jeff? His wife's giving him a divorce. Look, Janet, in my dressing gown pocket all the time. The telegram. I haven't even read it. Oh, it says he's flying in this morning. Mm -hmm, that isn't all. Oh, but this is wonderful. Jeff's been transferred to the American Embassy in Paris, Clive. And I adore Paris. It'll be a completely new life for me. And I'll meet new and exciting people, distinguished people. Oh, darling, I'm so pleased for you. Isn't it wonderful? Oh, I'm so madly happy. If you're as happy as all that, you can let me have that painting. Clive, it's yours. Take it. You're driving up to town? Of course. Why? You'll find Gordon plodding along the road somewhere. You can give him a lift. Gordon? Oh, Gordon. Oh, he'd be lucky if I don't run him over. Well, goodbye, you two. I must fly or Jeff will be wondering what's happening. Especially with your engagement to Gordon in all the morning papers. What? Oh, my goodness. Oh, no! <laughs> So ends our Caltex play, Four in Hand. In a moment, we will give you tonight's cast and tell you about next week's presentation in the Caltex Theatre. Ladies and gentlemen, the producer of tonight's Caltex play, who was also responsible for the play's adaptation, E. Mason Wood. Thank you. Four in Hand was written by Michael Britt. In the starring role you heard... I play Diana Masters. This was Aileen Britton.
The remaining trio were as follows. Janet, Philippa Baker. Clive, Kevin Brennan. Gordon, Don Pascoe. Thank you, Mr. Wood. To Margot Shane, the Seven Hills of Rome meant nothing but a symbol of the irritating fact that she had to travel so far from Hollywood to make yet another of those fabulous movies which had made her the idol of millions of adoring fans. But she found that the Eternal City was to provide the backdrop to the greatest drama she had ever played, as her own life moved to a violent climax. Be listening next week for this powerful story, The Seven Hills. And remember, too, coming productions include The Lady from the Sea and If This Be Error, further outstanding dramas soon to be heard in the Caltex Theatre. Now, this is your compere, Rick Hutton, bidding you good night. On behalf of your hosts, Caltex Oil, marketers of Caltex Super Gasoline and Caltex Gasoline, the world-famous RPM 1030 Special Motor Oil, and Marfac Lubrication. Music